Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Daisy Diaries. Today's episode is going to be very special because I have the beautiful, talented entrepreneur, uh, Tara Electra, and she is the CEO and founder of Unruly Agency, also Golden Child. You're also, you work with Hubi. Mm-hmm. Um, she is such a boss babe, entrepreneur. She is somebody that I look up to. I admire so much, and I wanted today's episode to be focused on her. I feel like she interviews a lot of people, but I want to know Tara and how you got here. You're very successful, and you have managed a lot of people and helped so many creators become successful so yeah here we have tara thank you so much for having me on i love you thank and i you. you know how much i think you're a boss babe too so i appreciate you for having me on yeah what do you want to get into i want to pick your brain because <laughs> yeah. um tara literally is just so humble and so down to earth but she is a multi-millionaire and she has just been killing it. So I kind of want you to take us to the very beginning. Like, mm-hmm. how did you get started? You went to, did you go to college? I went, tried to go to college and okay. then I dropped out. Really? Yes. Isn't that insane? That yeah. most like a lot of successful people never went to college or they dropped out of college. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? I know. So I, I think I wanted, I tried to go for my dad but then, and I, cause I wanted to always make him proud. And yeah. I think today that I still work s- so hard because I always wanted to make him proud. So mm-hmm. it's gonna kind of been my driver. And I know that could be like a trauma, but I'm like, it's a trauma <laughs> that drives me. <laughs> and he's, he's the best dad ever. He just always like raised me like, you know, work hard, do what you can. Like where you have, you're, you know, you live in America, like do what you can to like be great. And like, yeah. cause he wasn't from here. Um, so I was raised that way. So I know that he was very like, wanted me to go to college, wanted me to have like the traditional way to get successful. And it was so rewarding for me now, once I, you know, launched my business and actually did successful and he came to my office and saw everything. And then he's just kind of like been more quiet, like not, he hasn't been so like, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. Like he was always kind of harder on me before. Mm -hmm. And now he's like, whatever you're You're, doing you're killing it and i'm like and i went the whole opposite path of what he told me to do so he's just like okay it's fine you know i I feel like i was on the same boat because my dad went to university and so he literally expected all of his daughters to go to college and when i wasn't when i didn't go to college none of his daughters went to college unfortunately sorry dad but (laughs) but we all have a following on social media and so i I know it was like not the tradition he also was very traditional Mm -hmm. but i'm sure he's like he's proud i'm sure your dad is so proud of you yeah um how did you what what made you want to start your own business because I watched your um episode how to have an abundant mindset and you talked about how you were living paycheck to paycheck Mm -hmm. and you know that's when you started to listen to specific podcasts or change the way that you were thinking like how what motivated you or like what yeah I think like I've always thankfully been someone that I didn't know, but I was very stubborn when Mm -hmm. I was younger. Like I didn't realize that would help me in life. Mm -hmm. So like, for an example, I got held back in second grade because I was like, I wanted to like go out. Like for an example, we'd be sitting in class and it wouldn't be recess yet, but I'd be like, say I have to go to the bathroom and then just go outside and start doing cartwheels like outside of the <laughs> kindergarten like what? I was like a rebel kid <laughs> and then like and then pe- the rest of the kids would want to follow me and come do cartwheels <laughs> with me outside like when no one's out there and I just like always wanted to like break the rules I guess yeah and so I didn't like being told what to do so mm-hmm. that has always been in me since a young age mm-hmm. and then I think that you know I got held back I was told I wasn't smart and then that also I think drove me at the time it made my confidence very low because Mm -hmm. then I from the moment of getting held back like I was cool in school and then I was like not cool because Mm -hmm. now I'm like younger than all my actual age and they're like oh you're not in our grade anymore you know yeah and so that gave me a lot of like self-conscious likeness and like I grew up being like okay well I'm always behind everyone else or I'm not smart enough and all those things but one time when I just really like, I realized I was playing the victim. Mm. And like when I really learned about law of attraction, yeah. it's kind of like, yeah, if you think that, you know, you're not smart, then you're not smart. Or you think that you're not going to have good things in life, then you're right. You're not going to have good things in life. Yeah. And then I started to be like, oh yeah, why am I, why? I'm doing this to me? Yeah. Why am I playing this? Yeah. And so I slowly started to like switch it. And that's not easy to do. I it's think not. people hear that and they're like, okay, you know, 
one day I'm just going to be so positive and I'm going to be so like abundant, but it's always, you're always working on it. And yeah. I think that's one thing people need to understand is I work on being abundant every day. Yeah. And I didn't grow up feeling like you can have unlimited stuff in your life. Yeah. You know, I'd like to think I grew up being like, oh, you're going to be successful, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. And so once I realized you can create your own rea reality, I was just like, okay, if I can create my own reality, what would I want to happen? And so I started being like, okay, I love working in social media. Like I saw I was addicted to going online. Okay, yeah. I'm like, and then I was like, okay, if I'm online this much, I need to make money from it. And that was like before influencers were a thing. Like mm -hmm. no one was really making money online. What and year I remember was this? thinking that. Um, probably like the beginning stages of Instagram. Like 2017? I don't know what time year 20, it, when Instagram I think like really 20, came out. 16, yeah, I was 7? in beauty college oh, when Instagram really? became a thing. I initially oh. went to beauty college. I didn't even know beauty college was a thing. Yeah, what even is beauty college? Because my dad was a hairstylist, so he's like, "Have go get go get your cosmetology license." At the worst case, if you don't find out what you want to do, you can mm. fall back on that. And I was young. I went when I was young. I was like sixteen. I wasn't even graduated from high school, so I did it. Um, you could do the you could do it on the side for like extra credit. Mm. So they let me do it on the side after school. And then graduated from that, didn't love doing that, and then always was on the computer. So I'm like, I need to figure out what I can do on the computer. And then that's when I started learning about law of attraction. And then um, one day I just knew I wanted to work in this industry, so I begged to be um, this guy's assistant that worked with influencers at that time. Oh, he interesting. He worked with like, influencers at the beginning of their era. And no one knew how they were making money still. And so then I was like, can I work with you? <laughs> Literally <laughs> just like, begged Please. to work with him, <laughs> dropped everything. He lived in West Hollywood and started like living the life of like the digital social media. Like manager. Time. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like going to lunch with influencers, like taking me to like YouTube headquarters. And I was like, this is so cool. And then I was just like learning so much and seeing the behind the scenes of how these influencers are starting to make money. Mm -hmm. And then um, he he lost this big deal that he had. But what was good about it was I was learning so much and he only liked to network, but he didn't like to actually do the work. Mm -hmm. So he'd get all these opportunities, but he didn't like to like go home and like implement them. So he's kind of like, you do it. Yeah. And then he'd still hang out with the influencers uh -huh. and like just hang out with them because he was like our age and yeah. younger. So then I'd have to go back and I'm like researching things online, learning how to make pitch decks and proposals, learning how to project manage. Like I had to like, it's like I took Teach a full yourself. course in social media. Damn. And then when he lost this one deal that he had that was making all his money, he like, you know, kind of did a spiral, went in a little bit of depression. And I just moved to Hollywood to be closer and I had my own rent to pay. And then I was just like, I just had this knowing inside mm -hmm. that this was like no longer meant for me and mm -hmm. I think that's a really big thing is like following your intuition yeah. and your gut when something's mm -hmm. not right and I went in there being like I don't know what I'm gonna do how I'm gonna pay my rent but I'm quitting and I quit because he was like starting to pay me late not paying me on time mm -hmm. saying oh I'll get it to you and I was like this is not no. going the right yeah. direction so I just went in and I was like I'm quitting left and then it was like scary, but freeing. And yeah. if I didn't listen to like law of attraction and all that stuff, I would have probably not done it. Yeah. But I had this like trust in the universe, like the universe is going to have your back when you yes. do something that scares you. Mm -hmm. And so I did that and then took that leap and then was like, okay, I want to start my own business. How do you even start your own business? No idea. So, it must have been so scary, but so exciting at the same yeah. time. So I like wrote a bunch of names on my notes, like a bunch of names that I liked and like writing a bunch of names, looking on legal zoom, being like, okay, how much is it to create your own LLC? Figured out my own LLC. I'm like, what do I say I do? Okay. Well, I work <laughs> in so social media. I'm like, how do I make a website? So I'm like making this website all pretty, like being like, okay, this is what I do. And then not, I think I just like, one thing I, I say, but I always know it doesn't resonate with people as much because it's always been like a negative thing, but yeah. everything is fake it till you make it. Like it just, is true. It you're is so never going to feel confident enough. You have to fake it to yourself. Yeah. Till you make it. Sometimes it's okay to be a little Delulu yeah. for yourself. <laughs> yeah, for yeah. sure. So yeah, that's how I got started in all this. So that is how Unruly came about? No, this was my first company. It was called Electric Mind. Oh, I didn't even know there was another yeah. thing before this one. Yeah, so I um, I helped festivals bring influencers out for ticket oh. sales. So I used to get like all these this talent together for like EDC, Rolling Loud, the all the Rolling Louds. Oh my God. 
um, hard summer, started doing Coachella, um, and pitching my company. They, so Insomniac would hire Electric Mind to p- put together a campaign for influencers to uh-huh. promote their ticket sales and come out and have like an experience at their festivals. Wow. Yeah, but I didn't know my worth at the, at the time, so I didn't know what to charge. And I had a real big problem with, like, owning my worth then. So I used to, like, get barely any money, but being like, it's just little old me, so it's fine, you know? Yeah. So that's when I was going, like, months between not making money um, and not charging enough to make money in between festivals. And then I was working, like, so much when I'd plan these festivals because there's so many little logistics of, you know, them posting, and I'd have to bring, like, 40 influencers and I'm like managing all their posts oh and all the stuff and gosh. barely charging anything so I got like way less than minimum wage when you actually calculate it. How old were you? Um, probably like 23 maybe and like you 23. you were doing all of this by yourself? Yeah just at my apartment. And then from <laughs> there, you're like just little of me in my apartment. Yeah. Okay and then from there what how how did you go from there to unruly? Yeah, so it took a while before that, before I had Unruly. I think I was like 26 uh, or something when I got Unruly. Um, but, really? Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, so I kind of like grinded it out um, with Electric Mind. And like I said, festivals, it's like only when a festival is happening I would get paid. Mm-hmm. So there's like a lot of time in between. And every time I had to repitch my value to the next festival. And then I, I, long, I, I started to see, and this happens all the time with every um company in the industry and it's sad but once a lot of these companies get what they need from an influencer they don't they no longer want to pay what it's worth right Mm. they like build the backs off these influencers so like for an example edc was down thirty thousand ticket sales and i brought this group of influencers out um and they all like hyped it up it was so fun it got then got into the press because it was like a viral moment of one of these influencers dating a celebrity that ended up coming mm-hmm. and it was like this huge group of talent the next year they sold out and then they added 50,000 more ticket sales and sold that out too. Oh. So it's like the hype of the previous year, like looking cool again, then sold out the next year. And then then the next year, and then they were like, okay, we don't want to pay you anymore. Like, like we don't need you anymore. Influencers are going to come anyways, and we don't need to pay for the, like the first Damn. trip I did, they paid for all the influencers, hotel rooms, party buses, everything, like covered everything. And then I was like, I could barely get like just enough tickets. And then they're like, these people will come anyway. So then I had to go out and pitch brands to sponsor their hotel rooms and all this stuff. Because the influencers are still like, well, I want you to cover my trip. You yeah. did it last time. So yeah. so I had to start getting more creative and learning how to pitch brand deals and like all this stuff. Oh so I just gosh. learned so much. But again, was barely making any money. But I think what you realize, what you realize is that if you love doing something, it doesn't matter about the money. Like yeah. I always didn't make a lot of money and didn't care. And I worked 24-7. So... And you enjoyed what you were doing at the time and you knew that it was going to, you know, that you were going to at least love what you were doing to be successful at the very end of it. But not really because there's videos of me. I've made some videos back then. So there's this video of me that I made when I was just like in between months and months of not making money. Yeah. And like and also times I've gotten fucked over because I was kind of screwed over by people in business because I didn't at the time think it was maybe because I was a girl and I was young, but now looking back, I was a young girl and, um, and I didn't know my value and my worth as much. Yeah. And so I was paid less and a lot of times taken advantage of because people are like, oh, she's good. We figure it out. So I found out that I was putting all these campaigns together and the person that I was working over at this um, company was getting huge salary increases and I was getting paid less and less every time I would do it. And they were taking the credit for a lot of the other stuff I was doing. So they looked at it as like a small budget towards some things, but didn't know that this was like the entire campaign. So yeah, so I got screwed over a lot. So there was times that I was like, there's a video I made like crying in my room being like, it's so hard to be like, to build a business like people don't tell you how hard it is like I'll never be successful like there's times that you will get really down on yourself Mm -hmm. and so the biggest thing for me like when I got this house and like had my career was like it hit me and I'm like wow every time I doubted myself I still got here and so it's not about like 
oh, you have to always be positive and know, oh my God, I'm going to make it. Like some days you're going to feel like, oh, I can do it. And a lot of days you're not going to yeah. feel like you can do it. You, you know, know? <laughs> um, there was, um, I, whenever I would get into like those ruts where I would feel like I'm, I felt like I was like going downhill. I don't know where you learn this from, but usually what it, it, it looks like this, but you're going up. There has yes. to be highs and lows, but you are constantly always going to keep evolving. And I literally, kid you not, I at some point in my life, I literally was like, I'm never going to be successful. I yes. literally, I thought without college, I was never going to be successful. Yeah. And it's because society literally has implemented in our brains that if you don't go to college, you're not going to be successful. But I feel like nowadays with social media, with TikTok, like do, also like them trying to ban TikTok, it's like, Crazy. I just think it's insane because a lot of people have been able to make money from TikTok mm -hmm. to promote their businesses and it really has helped out a lot of our generation and I feel like now people are waking up and seeing that you don't have to go to college you don't mm -hmm. have to go the traditional route you can really make money on social media and find other different endeavors and I just think your story is so inspiring like literally when I was listening to your um, podcast episode this morning I was like oh my gosh like you have came such a long way mm -hmm. And I feel like you're just going to keep getting bigger and bigger. I literally, Tara, you're a billionaire. <laughs> you're Aww. a billionaire. I'm manifesting it for you now. I know. I am um, manifesting it. Just even the first time that I came to your house, I was like, oh my gosh, this is, your house is so insanely beautiful. Thank you. Um, I never so, stopped feeling grateful too. Ever. Yes. That's something that I've learned, especially um, through spirituality. Before you even ask the universe for anything, you always have to say thank you first mm -hmm. and just live life with gratitude. And I also have learned that even on your bad days, I've learned to not work against it, to just go with it. So mm -hmm. if you're having a bad day, just kind of take it for what it is. To, it's a, might be a bad day, but not a bad life. And just kind of... So true. Yeah. And that's so that, that's something that really um, helped me out. Just like you, I never had this mindset that I do now. And it, it takes a long time to really like train yourself mm -hmm. to constantly remind yourself of like these things. Because I feel like in the beginning when getting into spirituality, it's like so much to take in and you go down this rabbit hole of like, and so I was like, do very well with like my affirmations and meditating and stuff like that. And then I would kind of steer away from it. And then I'm like, crap, I need to go back to it. And it's exactly. just like a constant thing where you have to constantly like train yourself. Um, okay. But now Unruly is one of the most successful mm -hmm. agencies out there and you manage a lot of big creators. Um, how did Unruly get started? Yeah. So, um, there was something I was thinking about before you said that, that I was like, would be cool to mention too for you, but what was it? Oh, I'll come back to okay. it. Okay. So we'll just cut that. <laughs> it'll, it'll come back. Um, yeah. So I, one thing that's really cool mm -hmm. on how I got to Unruly mm -hmm. was I failed so many times. And along the time of failing, you always are going to feel like you can't, you're never going to be successful. You can't do it. Or like, you know, life sucks or poor you because trust me, if I actually counted how many like partnerships I've created and businesses I've created, I'm not kidding you. It's probably I had like 20 something businesses before I even had the success with electric mind and unruly and like electric mind was there, but I was still trying to build other partnerships and other mm -hmm. things to make me more money. Like I failed so many times, not Damn. kidding you. So when, when unruly came again, I, mm -hmm. by that time I already started so many other like businesses and partnerships mm -hmm. that screwed me over that I have a million stories, but then when that one happened, I didn't know it was going to be successful. That's like one of the key things that I feel like is I've seen with different entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. They're like some of them know and some of them are like, yeah, I didn't know it was going to be what it was today. And I feel like I've seen Damn, that with talent. Crazy. They're like, I didn't know that it was going to be this big, their social media. And so like I just did it because I found interest in it, not because I was like, oh, this is going to make me a millionaire. And so I just really was like, okay, I like this. This seems interesting. Let me start building it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I went into it knowing. So I remember at the beginning when I, when I started to decide to do it, I built this deck um, mm -hmm. for these guys that were kind of starting to do something like it, uh -huh. but they, they weren't understanding it in the full way that I saw it. And so I pitched myself again to them. They turned me down. And from there, I'm like, okay, well, I already have this like plan. And at the time, Matt, who, you know, yeah. was like, you should just do this yourself. And then I'm like, really? And then I was like, okay, maybe. And then I'm like, I've never, I was always like 
a little bit overthinking it, but then I'm like, you're right, let me just try it. So then I started planning and I started meeting with different people that I was like, okay, I need a traffic guy because I wanted someone to also Mm -hmm. help with traffic. And so I met with a few people and then I went to a random meeting for another deal I was doing Uh and I met my business partner that I then had at Unruly. And Mm -hmm. I mentioned to him like, yeah, if you want to refer some people to this agency, you can like not acting like it was mine. Cause that was a big thing for me. Electric mine. I didn't tell anyone I owned it. Mm. And then I wasn't going to tell anyone I owned this. I yeah. always like to be behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, just because I feel like it makes people think it's bigger too. Yeah. When you're by for yourself. Sure. Like for sure. it's better if no one knows how many employees you mm-hmm. have, like what's going on. It's like, yeah. Oh, what's this thing? So, um, I think that's a good thing for anyone starting, but, <laughs> um, then, uh, he's like, well, why don't we just do this together? And then I was like, mm, like I'll figure it out like okay he's like we should just do it and I was acting like it was someone else's and then he was like very eager so he like called me every day like hey let's do it come on let's go like we should do it with me I know that I know traffic I know this and I'm like okay he sounds very eager and Mm -hmm. he does know traffic so I'm like all right I'll do it with him but I was also juggling this other business opportunity so I was building this and I remember looking through the names and being like yeah, it should be unruly. Like, that's a good name. And I'm like, trust me, it should be named unruly. And then he's like, okay, sure. And then we started moving forward. But again, still didn't think it was going to be that crazy. And Mm -hmm. then we launched our first creator and she made like $30,000 in like the first few days. And we're like, holy shit, we have something here. (laughs) Yeah. That's a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. And that was like when paywalls are like, we're just coming out to like monetize your own fan base instead of pitching yourself to a brand. Mm -hmm. And so then it just started growing so quickly and we're like next creator, next creator. And then, uh, COVID hit and all the creators were out of work. Damn. Yeah. And then, so I just, I knew all this talent for like so long since I was like 23 and working or even maybe before that I was working with talent too but I had collected so much talent that I knew so then it was so easy for me to scale and do so what was interesting that I would say is like every single one of my failures lined me up perfectly for that moment like if I didn't fail in all the I knew so much then at that point about social media that I knew exactly what to what to do that it was like the perfect recipe to like skyrocket it was the perfect timing perfect everything yeah and that's what i think is huge is like you fail you might fail a million times but every single one of them are lining you up for the thing you do well at it's wild when would you say was like your i made it moment um i think it was when we like well actually one day when i was sitting at home in my yeah. apartment mm-hmm. and we started making like real money i was like calculated how much i'm gonna make this month and i'm like holy fuck i'm gonna make this much and if i make this much every month then i'm gonna make a million dollars like it's fucking crazy so like one day i'm like this is fucking insane (laughs) and i remember being like that's insane and so like my mind was blown but this was like the beginning of everything when we didn't even really have employees yet me and my partner were like running everything ourselves like we got our first hire and we're like this is crazy so i remember that feeling Mm -hmm. so that was a moment where i'm like this is crazy but Mm -hmm. it was didn't sink in yet yeah i think when it sunk in was when we like had a full team, got our first office and got this like huge office, had everyone in their own offices and their own desks. And I'm like, wow, this is crazy. And then we had like all these press companies reaching out to us. We had no press team. They're all like all wanting to interview us, like hounding us to meet with us. And I'm like, this is insane. Do you feel like everything happened so rapidly that it was almost like a blur or it was like slowly? Yes. I feel like it was happening so quickly um, that it was a blur, but you know what's interesting too is once you get known like because i cut our company got famous really quickly yeah like everyone was just so many people were reaching out to us at one Mm -hmm. point it looks like right when you blow up everyone wants to talk to you and work Mm -hmm. with you and everyone thinks it's like people that used to be a little bit rude to me in hollywood are now like oh now they're like being sucking up to me Mm -hmm. i saw that like Mm -hmm. i saw a lot of people flip and i'm like oh hi i know who you really (laughs) were (laughs) you're like I'm not gonna forget (laughs) yeah and so I saw all that but I think what was hard is like you have a million opportunities coming at you Mm -hmm. and so you don't know exactly how to like structure and garner it um but I think it taught me a lot because then we got you know things that didn't happen that were so that were good we had you know problems that any business owner really has but Mm -hmm. because we were in the public eye it was harder. It's like having a business in general is hard. Yeah. Having a business that's 
literally has publications trying to interview your employees 24 7 mm. is also <laughs> next lot. level hard yeah. and then some of your employees like want to be famous and so anyway oh. so i had a lot of things to learn but mm -hmm. i feel like it's all like got me to a place to like really appreciate the business not every business is you know going like this there's ups and downs yeah. and it's like i've been through so much now and unruly it's really shaped my whole like emotions how many years has it really been it was four, four. years this month <gasps> really mm -hmm. oh my god four years already yes what March. is if i could ask what would you say is unreleased net worth right now if you could take like a guess i have no idea but i know we've made like hundreds of millions for creators at this point yeah that is and obviously insane. we only we only get a percent of that but some people think we get the whole thing so i'm just crazy but anyways <laughs> some of our employees do i'm like you know the talent makes 80 <laughs> percent. <laughs> they're like, like um, you guys are making crazy money but anyway so we've made a lot of money but what's really great is we've made a lot of money for talent yeah. and we've also actually made a lot of money for employees like there's been some employees that like you know got their first place and now can like move out of their parents houses and get out of debt so it's been fulfilling to see like not only people come from you know a job a nine to five job to now like building their whole career and yeah. like being passionate about what they're doing on the employee side and the talent side and on the employee side we're like 90 percent females too which is cool i love that yeah um what would you say if i can ask you yeah. what would you say is your net worth Oh, that's a hard one. I, I don't know. know. Really? <laughs> I know it's hard to say because I own, the only reason I don't know is because I own a piece of some other companies. I've invested yeah, you, into you've other invested, companies. So uh -huh. technically, maybe more than I think because depending on what those companies are worth, you know, when they sell. So it's hard to say. Um, Take a wild guess. I just like a wild guess. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. One time someone told me above 10 million. For sure above 10, 100%. Yes, but yeah. then I don't know for sure because nothing, like, I think once you, also, like, what you have in your bank account is really what I like, what I pay attention to, not as much what I have in things. Yeah. Because it's like, who knows for sure what will happen. Yeah, that is so true. You know? Yeah. And then I don't, um, I haven't, I don't own my house. I rent my house. Oh, this one? I love this house so much. It's mm -hmm. so pretty. So I don't like own a lot of stuff. So it's hard to say. I've just been investing in a lot of things, like investing in stocks, investing. I have like um, a guy that also invests my money for me. And then... That's amazing. So yeah. So figuring all that out is how you create more wealth, which you, is hard. You have been able to create your wealth. Let's just say your net, your net worth is for sure over $10 million. You have been able to create this abundance for you because you have different like mm -hmm. investments. So you have money flowing in from a bunch of different mm -hmm. um, projects. What would you, what advice would you give to someone who's trying to start like a business? Yeah, themselves? that's true. Now that I'm thinking about it, obviously over 10 million because my equity and I'm really. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I was like, just thinking about things that I have collected now and I've invested into. But yes, and really is worth a lot I feel more. like you're so. <laughs> humble though I'm and down so to humble. earth yes you are you're so humble you're so down to earth that you're just like I'm helping everyone around me you know I'm doing this I'm doing that but have you ever taken a step back and been like okay I'm making this much this much this much and like just actually try to get an estimate I think I probably should to make myself feel better that's what I was gonna say but like I, I always think feel you like definitely I'm, should <laughs> I always work like I have no money I, I work 24 that's, that's a good mindset to have yeah. though that that really is a good mindset to have um, something that I have learned um, through like reading and stuff is in order to receive, you have to give. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like because you are so giving and you help out a lot of people around, you know, the universe keeps blessing you yeah. with a lot of abundance. What drives you to give back? I think like there's different things because I've done a lot of deep digging. Yeah. So I think when you're like overly like give yourself sometimes it comes from not feeling good enough yourself mm. because you're like constantly feeling like you need to give value to others so that's something I've learned now getting older that I'm like okay Tara you need to also let people give to you yeah and that was hard for me because Oof. I overgave myself so much I think I'm going through that right now <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I know you give a lot yeah. I've seen that with you okay which is a good thing it's a very good thing I prefer people like that I think it's a good thing takers. but it could be a bad thing it could be a bad thing because then you have to you have you and it's funny because the Aquarius I'm Aquarius it's like you it's a cup 
Yeah. And I have to fill my own cup sometimes. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I feel like um, I fill a lot of people's cups and then I, I don't get anything in return. So I'm learning how to set that boundary or like to just give as enough as they're giving me. Exactly. Yeah. And that's been a hard thing for me to like really step back even from like friendships I've had mm. too because I do it in friendships. I always feel the need to like help them with their lives. And like my love, love language is helping people make money. I don't know why. Like I want to <laughs> like, that's like the ultimate. I love that. Yeah. It's like the ultimate love. Like someone that's going to help you like be successful. Like I can't help but like see exactly what someone should do and want to help them. And sometimes it's like, not everyone deserves that, you know, and yeah. some people have taken advantage of me because of it. Yeah. And so, or like taking things and then like peace out. Um, so I've had to learn that. So sometimes I'm, I'm still learning that. I don't yeah. think I've learned it completely, but I think what, I think, you know, the driver isn't always a positive driver, but what I'm learning now at my age is yeah. that some negative drivers are the things that make you successful. Like yeah. me not maybe feeling good enough has made me successful or me wanting to make my dad proud because I wanted him to pay attention to me more because he works so much is me now driving to like mm. be successful. So some of your negatives are actually could drive you. They, they can turn <laughs> on to a positive. Yeah. I feel like I, that's something that I really genuinely struggle with a lot. I realized, and I think this is where I fucked up. Like there has been times where like I go out with my friends or my family and they automatically expect me to pay for everything Same or to me. call that's the Ubers life. or to whatever <laughs> it is. And like, I feel like I don't mind it, but you know, at some point I'm just like, they don't even say thank you or they're not appreciative. It's now. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, why do you expect me to? And, and I was like, okay, well, because I did it every single time now it's expected, but I'm just kind of like, and now I feel rude saying like, no. Hey, can you pay for dinner this time? Cause My I paid. Life. So then I don't know how to go about it. I, I really don't. Cause I don't want to come off as rude or maybe them being like, well, she knows that she has more money than me. Why wouldn't she pay? And then, so then I just, yeah, but it's also like, me paying for you all the time isn't helping you. That's what yeah. I've also started to realize. Like mm. people need to own their own life and the, and not, and it's always, it's not always going to be appreciated. You taking care of someone, you're also like hurting their growth because like, Ooh. you know, th that should inspire them that you have more money and make them want to do more. Not being like, Oh yeah, because I'm don't have as much money as you, you should take care of me. Because then again, that's victim mentality. And what's yeah. that going to do for them other than keep them in the energy of not doing anything for themselves? But I'm in the same boat too. I pay for everything yeah. to the point where like now I feel awkward to let anyone even split it with me. I'm just like, I'll, it's just, I don't want it to be awkward. I know. Like, no. But then I also do feel bad because then I'm like, okay, like, you know, I'm very financially blessed. So I'm like, you know, I'll just pay, but then it's like this never ending cycle of like, okay, I need to set. I just think my thing is like, especially with my family, like I'm such a giver, but I literally realized I was like, okay, like I need to take a step back and kind of, you know, let them appreciate just me and like what has came with, exactly like, do you get what i mean well like, it's stressful too to take I, I feel like me and you are very similar on this yeah taking care of everyone else like initially when you first probably started your career and you first started making money you didn't even think about it you're just like let me take care no, of, of you let me take not. care yeah. of you you saw the thought but after like some years yeah some of years taking care of people now i'm just kind of like, just like um, okay well i'm always having to like I am, you know, you want to be smart with your money too. And yeah. you're just like, I need to set myself up too. And if I'm paying yeah. for everyone else, it's kind of like, you know, not every, not all of your life is like this. Sometimes yeah. you're like this and like, sometimes you feel like plateau and yeah. then you need to build it again. And you're like, why am I always working hard to pay for everyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Full family to take care of. I haven't even had kids yet. No, that is <laughs> true. I think it's just a matter of learning how to set boundaries. I think that's something that I'm really working on. I feel like I've been good at, at setting boundaries in friendships, mm -hmm. um, but I'm still struggling with like just because I love my family a lot, but you know, yes. it's, it's a work in progress, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, you are, you are so that person though. I can see it in two <laughs> seconds. And like, that's why it makes me mad. Anyone that thinks things of you on the internet, cause you are so giving mm, and so loving you. and so abundant thank too. You. And you. so, yeah, I could just see it within two seconds, how much you care. Like even in the office there's no cameras, there's nothing there and you want to like help people. So yeah, for sure. I literally, 
that's something I, I wonder what was the interview that I watched, but it literally said as money comes in, it has to flow out. So, Mm -hmm. um, that's where, that's why I wanted to start the foundation. I was like, you know what? I'm very comfortable in my life now. I'm taking, my family's good. My friends are good. So I was like, now I need to give something back to my community. But, and that's a huge one too. If I ever feel lack, I'll go like pace a homeless person. I'll go give them money. If I'm feeling sad, I, I don't, I think this is a really good trait of mine, but if I'm feeling sad, I will go and like buy someone flowers or just do something for somebody. That's just something that makes me feel better. Although I'm not feeling good. I'm like, okay, at least I feel better. Yeah. And it's, that's a huge one. It's, it's really good to have yeah. that. Like, um, giving love. Yeah. And they that, always say too, like, if you feel uncomfortable in a room, make sure everyone else feels comfortable. So oh. it's like all like you take your mind out of yourself when you start to like be of service. So like you saying like you don't feel good or you're sad and you give to other people and you make their day, like it's getting yourself out of your own way. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like that comes with the conditioning of like being in spiritual. How did you get into spirituality? That is my yeah. next question. Yeah. I know spirituality is so important. People that are not spiritual, so, I'm like, how are you living? It's so important, especially <laughs> with like the law of attraction, <laughs> literally like <laughs> affirmations, like everything, like just even crystals are like so yeah. good at just helping our everyday life. I don't know, but how did you get into spirituality? Yeah. So, um, I was actually going through a breakup and it was like, I dated this guy after this other guy, the guy that I like first dated when I was younger and mm-hmm. then like lost my virginity to was in love with as like, and I was younger. And then like we broke up and then we got back together and it was like a whole thing once I got o- a little bit older and then, um, me and him got in a fight and then we we broke up and we were kind of like on the outs and I met this other guy, but I wasn't over my ex yet. Mm-hmm. And so I met this other guy and we started dating and like, I was just like, oh, it's just for fun. Um, and I didn't realize, but at the time, cause I was kind of just having fun, but I took it, I took the relationship for granted. And so I did something stupid in the relationship. We ended up breaking up. And okay. once I, once I like lost him, uh-huh. I realized I was like, holy shit, I think that's what love was. And I realized like he was my first real mm-hmm. love. And cause I was like, oh, he was like my best friend. I had so much fun with him. Like we were so in the moment. And so anyways, I got really depressed after that. Mm-hmm. Like, cause then I, I, I was like, why did I, I screwed up. So mm-hmm. I was like, it's my fault. I lost him. He, he was like really mad at me. He wouldn't talk to me. Um, so I went down a spiral and then my sister was dating this guy at the time and he told her about the secret, you, you know, the secret. Oh, I know the yeah. secret. Have you watched, did you read the book or did you watch the movie? I watched the movie. I watched the movie too. Yeah. So he told her about it. And I remember we were on our way to work one day and it was when I was doing hair and I was a hairstylist. And so when, when we were on our way, she played it for me. She was telling me in the car, she's like, yeah, he was bringing up to me like law of attraction that he like manifest his parking spots. And I'm like, what? What is that? What? Like, that sounds interesting. <laughs> okay. And this was when I was like depressed over the sky. So then she, I was like, play it for me. So she like put the thing on YouTube and played it for me. And I'm like listening in the car and then I was like, oh, interesting. And for some, th- some reason, something just clicked. clicked. I was like, I am depressed, but I'm making myself depressed. Yes. Like I'm choosing to be a victim yes. right now. Like it just hit me because of that breakup. So I also think he was one of my soulmates because he like triggered me to grow. Because oh, that, and to go into that. Yeah. It's like if I didn't have that relationship and I didn't feel so down, he like pushed me into like growth. And so that's when I, I was ready to hear that. And then I went full into it of spirituality. I started list going down the rabbit hole. And then I'm like, why don't they tell you about this? Is this true? So then I try to manifest my first thing and I um, manifested money. But at the time I was so limited in my mindset. Mm-hmm. I was wanting to imagine hundreds, but I could only imagine twenties. <laughs> so I'm like, I can only imagine some tw- a lot of twenties in my hand. I'm like really trying to do hundreds. I was like, I don't see it. So I just did twenties and I'm like closing my eyes, imagining a lot of twenties. And then I went to a party like that weekend or something. Mm-hmm. And I imagined it a few days in a row. And I went to this party is when I used to party. So I like had a great Car time, party. left my jacket there. <laughs> Left my jacket there and they rented this Airbnb for the party. And then I called one of my friends and I'm like, hey, you know, I left my jacket there the next day. I'm like, I didn't even remember. Left my jacket there. And they're, so one of my friends drove me. They're like, well, no one owns that house. I'll tell the owner, like who, the, the owner of the Airbnb mm-hmm. to leave it outside. So it, my jacket was on the front along with uh, everyone's, a bunch of other people's stuff. And so I grabbed my jacket, walked down the steps, put my hands in my pocket and pulled out a lot of 20s. What? And I was like, oh my God. 
gosh. And then that's the moment I was like, oh, wow, this is like literally real. Yeah. And so from there, I started being like, what else can I manifest? And then I started to be like, why isn't society telling us this? Like, why it's are they the hiding secret. this? It's yeah. the secret. And so then I, I went full force. I feel like everyone should know the secret, but it's so hard to fully understand the secret because you can watch and you can hear about it but if you don't implement it into your life so it's like, true and also i think it's I, a really big thing is being ready to hear it because mm, it doesn't sink in you, the same way you have to also be ready to align to the secret mm -hmm. because if you're still vibrating super low and you're thinking exactly so, but it, it is like you slowly it's just a lot to digest all at once because i remember i was also super depressed i was super depressed and this was after um I was very suicidal at the time and I was just like being a victim and I would wake up and I would be so mad that I was waking up every day and I was just like, I hate my life, like I hate myself. And then I think finally I just got so tired of being in this constant like darkness and I was like, yeah. I need to get like, what, what is, I was like, please universe, anyone, God who is listening, like, please just like give me a sign to go on a different path. And the secret came up wow. and I watched the movie and that's when I was like, I was like, holy crap. And so then I started to, this book changed my life forever. It was, it was the four agreements. Oh wow. And that same author changed my life. I was yes. the voice of knowledge. Yes. Of um, and so I read the four agreements and then the power of now. And then yes. I started listening to Joe Dispenza and yes. Dolores Cannon. And Did you listen to Abraham Hicks? No, I haven't. Oh, wow. And I, that's when I started going into like the spiral. And I literally had like three books and I'm like annotated and highlighting. And then I started manifesting and I started journaling. And it's so crazy because I remember writing down like, I live in a beautiful mansion and I was describing this spiral staircase and I was being so detailed with everything. And I remember like in 2018 writing down, I drive a Bentley, like just wow. anything I could ever think of. Years later, I literally, I, I like got my dream car without thinking about it. And I'm like driving down and I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God, I wrote this in my journal four or five years ago. And now, and I was like, it like hit me so crazy. And then I remember I got home and I was like, the spiral staircase, I wrote that down. So I was just like, holy <laughs> shit. So cool. It was so, it's so cool now to see like how, when you really align exactly. with, with every, like everything just starts flowing and, and you have to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to do the shadow work. I think, you know, before it gets good, it, it gets really dark because exactly. with shadow work, I really started to see like my flaws and where I went wrong in relationships or friendships. And I had to do like the dirty greediness to mm -hmm. like get to the good stuff. Um, I feel like I'm, it's still like a challenge every day, but that's why it, for me, when people make, it's like, there's, there's two types of people. It's either the ones that are going to try to better themselves or the ones that hear about spirituality and then make fun of it where they're yes. like, Oh, your, your crystals or your woo woo. Oh, they're shit. like your little rocks. I'm like, and oh, I'm like, I'm like, Good, you'll watch me succeed and take over in the world and yeah, wonder no. why. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you'll wonder, you know, what is, um, I tried to, um, share this knowledge with like friends and families and the ones that kind of just laughed at me I was like okay you can stay stuck in the matrix I'm so sorry <laughs> yeah. but there are some of like my friends and families that got into crystals that got into spirituality yeah. and I've seen them literally change their mindset and I'm like okay like it makes me happy yeah it's so fulfilling uh, yeah but um I love spirituality. Um, who would you say are like your top three mentors? Like, yeah. So, hmm. so same for me that, what was that author's name again? That wrote the four agreements. I forget his name. It's like oh, Garrett. Oh, Garrett. I know we look, look at Garrett. Um, anyways, that guy, I read the same, the same author that wrote four agreements. Uh, I read the voice of knowledge and I thought that was really good. Also the seat of the soul. <gasps> I have you read. Re no, oh, I you haven't. have to read that one. I have one. to read it. Don Miguel Ruiz. <laughs> Dom, Dom, I'm like, that was a tongue twister. Dom Miguel and, Ruiz. And, yeah. And honestly, the, the the seed of the soul is literally this thick. And this is when you know I was spiritual. I read the entire thing. I don't think I've ever read a book that big in my life and haven't since. And this book is wild you have to read it but anyways and you have to read it some people have tried to get the audible and it's just not the same because it's really boring how he speaks so you'll yeah. just like kind of doze off yeah. and then not pay attention it'll take a while but read it um it just talks about how like the place you were born is like literally set up energetically for you to like 
grow within your soul purpose everything and like is every just single like thing is laid aligned out aligned the way that it is supposed to be aligned <laughs> no literally that's why i live by like you are at the right time you you are at the right place at the right time like exactly something that i'm just always constantly telling myself is i embrace the unknown and trust the universe like mm-hmm. i trust the process i think that's having trust in the universe is like something so hard because at times when i feel like i'm failing i'm like why is this happening to me right now yes. why didn't it go the way that i went i'm like oh like my wine mm-hmm. i was so passionate about that and then suddenly you know the partners were just like hey like we no longer want to do this and i was just kind of like oh my gosh like Everything was just kind of put in a hole. And I was like, so sad about it. And I was like, why? Like, I really loved it. But now, because yeah. I, I was able to, I'm loving the podcast. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm loving what I'm doing now. And I feel like if I was doing that, I wouldn't have been able to start something new. Yeah, so it's so true. Everything does happen for a reason. Yeah, sometimes when you have, it's, that's a big one I learned is like rejection. Mm. Like, and if you ever have rejection, it's just like, for some reason, like trying to remind myself, even in the pain of it, that like, okay, this was not meant for me. Yeah. It's like hard, but like it you is. have to be like, all right, but I thought it was and I can see it working out so good. No, it's not meant Especially for you. Especially with people. Yes. Man. Oh, there was this one guy I was so in love with and I just knew he was not for me. Yeah. And the universe kept giving me signs and I was just dodging them. <laughs> and then I'm, the pre- I'm pretty sure my spirit guys were like, I'm tired of this bitch. I was going back to him. But it wasn't until finally finally years later i finally closed that door that like i felt so liberated in the new you know i started attracting actual guys that were on the same frequency as me but it's hard that's hard and you know what sometimes you're better at spirituality in certain categories like i'm good with it with work i'm not as good at it as it with relationships and so like sometimes you still have areas you need to like heal and my sister's really good at working through I mean she's not in a relationship now but she understands like she really pays attention to spirituality with love and like feeling self-love and like so I've been now starting to do that like listening to a self-love meditation every day and just feeling love for myself and I've noticed a lot of like things are starting to work out like Mm -hmm. more like everything's going a little bit more smooth like for an example that's why I love Abraham Hicks if no one's listened to her yet if you haven't listened Mm -hmm. to her she's great initially she takes a little bit of time like you're gonna be like I remember when I first started listening to her I didn't really get it I was like I don't know what I think about her and by the way so everyone knows she she like taps into like her higher self so she'll like she calls her higher self Abraham Hicks but her real name's Esther Mm -hmm. and so when she talks to her higher self it's like she says our higher self is all knowing like we're all connected Mm -hmm. and so you're tapping into the universe like the part of you that's not really attached to like your ego Mm -hmm. that's like in the third dimension so anyways getting very spiritual (laughs) Um, i'm loving it so i mean i went to one of her um seminars and like nicole ritchie was there there's a lot of actresses there so i'm like people really listen to her but anyways she always talks about um like if you're going, you know, when things are meant to be, when you're going downstream and like things are working out smoothly, if you're trying to like fix things and bad things keep happening to block you and you're like, that's when you know you're going upstream and that's like you're forcing against the current, mm. you're forcing things to work out and that energy is not good. So anytime you really want something to happen, you need to go downstream. You need to feel like you're going downstream. You need to be like, things are working out for me. Your energy and how you show mm. up needs to be more like smooth and like going like, with the flow. Yeah, just like and so. Anytime I'm happen. like trying to like force things, I'm like, okay, you're in the be- you're in a very like lackful energy. I need to like mm. change the energy right now. I'm being the opposite of abundant right now. Can you, <laughs> for those listening, can you talk about the lack mindset? Because in yes. order to be in an abundant mindset, you have to acknowledge that you are in a lack mindset. Can you like just yes. talk about that? Yes. So, um, and I always try to like, cause I've listened to so many speakers on my podcast. I always tried to like make it easier for people to understand because sometimes they go like too deep into it, too hard to really understand. But Mm -hmm. I think like more basically Mm is just like, okay, how are you showing up in certain scenarios? Like if, if you are going to eat and you know, it's time to like order something you want or like you know that you want the salad, but you also want this appetizer and that appetizer. And like, you're like, should I really be paying that much money? If you're even thinking that, you know, you're in a lackful mindset. I'm not saying that you need to go order it if you're not in a financial place to do it. But those are like the little signs from the universe that you are in a lack 
mentality. And so I always try to like pay attention to when I'm in a lack mentality. Mm -hmm. So that way I can try to switch it. And those are the times that I'll go give money to someone because if you feel lackful and you go give money to someone that's proving to the universe and proving to yourself that you're, you have, that you believe the money will come back to you. And so so I've I've started to do little things like that of like switching my energy. Um, there's other things you can do if it's not money, like other ways of like helping and giving back that show the universe that, you know, you have to, I always think of this, you have to throw the ball in order for the ball to be thrown back at you. Like you have to do something opposite than that energy to get a new energy. Yeah, for sure. Because if you feel in lack, all you're going to have show up is lack. Yeah. Because if you're looking at the world in lack, then you're going to see reasons why you should be. And that's when you get the parking ticket or you have things show up and you're like, okay. And so when I get a parking ticket, yeah, it pisses me off because I know I was being lackful. (laughs) But I still am just like, okay, it's fine. I'll figure it out. Like I don't Mm -hmm. dwell on it too much because the more energy you put towards it, the more you get it back. And so I tried to like be move on yeah so it's Uh, just like noticing little things yeah for sure um I feel like I oh is it okay popped it out okay that distracted me what was I gonna say um for lackful mindset what do you do to know oh my god I just got a brain fart it was something so I think it was like a quote or something (laughs) I forgot okay but um yeah so going back to what you were saying if you are in a lackful mindset or if you're in a negative mindset I don't think people understand that whatever you put out you are going to get Mm -hmm. so if you're being negative if you're sitting on your computer and leaving hateful comments like you're gonna get all that negative energy back so true if you're being giving if you're being positive even if you're not feeling the best that day but you're still being kind to yourself like you're gonna attract good energy positive energy and I think it's so important to be careful with what you say Mm -hmm. because they say that the tongue is the deadliest sore sword and you know the universe is always listening yes so you have to be careful with what you say and be mindful of how you treat others and so true and literally just be kind to everyone I just think love goes such a long way um even I don't know I I feel like a lot of successful people don't have hate in their heart they don't have time to be jealous or to be negative I just feel like yeah it's such old like stuck energy yeah and anytime you are jealous of someone like if you look at someone and their life looks amazing and you have envy like switching that to like instead of being like oh why does she have that guy or why does she deserve Mm -hmm. that instead of doing that just be like wow she's living proof that I can have that or like good for her like I can do that it's like those little times those are all like lack negative energy and they're going to show up in different ways for everyone and like when they it's and then also meditation like when the quickest way to know what your negative places are that you need to heal is clearing your mind Mm -hmm. because then once you silence your mind and you get used to silencing your mind more and more the reason why they say meditation is so powerful is because as you get used to quieting your mind you're now the watcher of your thoughts And so the more you get used to being the watcher, it's like not, no one's going to be like completely empty during your meditation, but the more you get used to being the watcher and seeing what pops up, the more you can be like, okay, that is one of my spots I need to heal Mm -hmm. and that. And then when you're in real life, you're more present and you're like, okay, I'm doing it now. There it is. You're more present and you're also not (laughs) attaching yourself to people or to things or to situations. I feel, this is what I was going to say. I was going to say that, um, when you react to a situation that gets you mad or if you're driving and someone cuts you off and you let that piss you off and it ruins your day, you're giving away your energy. Mm-hmm. And giving away your energy, you are literally now in the state of lack. And so yes. I have learned to not let situations or people or, or anything specific take away my energy. So I have just learned to not react and to retract I think that is one of the best things to do. I love being in control of my life and my emotions. And when I react, I'm giving that power away. And so true. I've learned that I need to have control. And that was a hard one for me to learn. So hard. It literally is so hard. As I used to have the biggest road rage ever. Okay. (laughs) And it's not good because my mom was like one day, like you never know somebody can get off and like shoot you or try to fight you or like anything. And so I feel like, Every day my, I'm very, I used to be very impatient. I feel like every day my patience was being tested and I just have learned to like not let little things piss me off or 
me being impatient and just take it day by day. But like, yeah, that's something that I had to learn is um, to not give your energy away to people, places, situations. Yes. I think it really keeps me like in control of my life. I agree. Yeah, I agree. It's huge. It's and it's it's huge when negative things happen and people that want to know like business stuff. Negative things are always going to happen in mm-hmm. business and it's about how you, how you deal with them. That's the biggest piece. It's not things are going to happen to you no matter if you're positive or not, but it's all about how do you deal with them. Yeah. You know, that really is going to dictate like how that's going to play out in the future. Yeah. It's so crazy. Okay. So as we are <laughs> wrapping up this episode, if you had any advice for any boss babe out there, for anyone trying to be successful in life, like what? would that be it's always going to be like and it sounds not as exciting but it's like always just getting yourself back up because Mm. we all fail yes and it's just like normalizing failure is like a huge one like you know just because you fail does not mean you're not good enough or you're not smart enough or you don't have what it takes Mm -hmm. the only people that have what it takes are the people that get up the next day Mm -hmm. and do it again that's the literally the only difference like there's there's tons of people smarter than me right now that don't have a business (laughs) oh oh that is is a really good point (laughs) that is so true you know and the only difference is that I keep getting up and I keep working and I keep trying to be better you know yeah I love that that is so true you're the only person that's going to motivate yourself to get up Mm -hmm. like nobody else is going to do that for you yes well I love that I love that and I love you I love you too and I just want to say thank you so much for coming on here you guys can find Tara's podcast billion dollar baby yes yes billion dollar Uh, baby billion dollar baby and you can find all her social media I love your podcast it's so good and thank you thank you so much for coming on here I love you Daisy you're the best (laughs) Thank you guys, and I will see you on the next Daisy Diaries.